So on the last video that we did, we tested out a small heater, 1500 watt heater that we can uh, set down on the low setting for about 750 watts. And we also tried a little 5000 BTU air conditioner. And uh, the generators uh, seem to handle that just fine. So now the big test is inside our campers. We also have microwave, or at least my camper has a microwave. And we want to see if the generators will actually pull that microwave. So, Jack with, is... Uh, with the refrigerator running. And the refrigerator running, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll try to see if it'll run with the, the little heater going. But Jack is a busy guy, so he's going to kind of disappear out of the picture. And he's kind enough to let me uh, borrow his generator. So we'll be doing the test, the win against the Predator, and to see if uh, both of them will handle this test pretty good. <laughs> so for the test... We have our microwave set up, and we also have the uh, refrigerator set on the same circuit. Now, I have unplugged the converter, and I also unplugged my little heater that I use in here all winter long because I keep my trailer warm during the winter. And uh, so we're just about ready. Now, the microwave. The microwave I purchased from Walmart. It's an 850-watt microwave, and it pulls about 7.5 amps. So I'm confident that the generators are going to handle the uh, microwave just fine. The uh, refrigerator pulls probably a couple of amps maybe. Uh, so I don't know if it'll kick on during the test with the microwave. But if it does, I think the generators are going to handle fine. And I think they're rated around 13 amps. The only thing I don't know is right now I have the heater unplugged. And once the test you know, gets going, I want to test the microwave and the heater to see if, if it'll pull. My guess is the generators are going to overload and not uh, be able to handle that load. So with that, let me get set up. We'll start the generator and then we'll turn the power on to the refrigerator and microwave. Then we'll get a cup of water set in there and hopefully um, we can heat up some water. So to start out, we're going to use the wind, and uh, because that's mine, and if something goes wrong and I blow it up, then Jack's not out of a generator. So I don't want to ruin his generator for the test, so we'll use the uh, wind generator and uh, perform that test. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and plug it in, then we'll go in and turn the power on, then we'll get ready to put our water in, set the microwave, kick it on, with any luck, we get some uh, heat generated. So the next thing we do come over and uh, kick the power on and uh, when I do I think I'm going to hear a surge in the generator and I did so our microwave is on refrigerator is on and then uh, we'll get a cup of water we'll set in here and we'll get things cooking okay so we have one cup of water we're going to put it in the microwave. Right now the generator is running. It's on eco mode, so it's uh, on low power. We'll go ahead and put this for... I'm going to put it for four minutes. We want that water to boil. As soon as I hit start, we should hear that generator rev up. load. Uh, we're only pulling about seven, seven and a half amps. So at 850 watts, this is 1600 continuous watts. It's running uh, pretty smooth. So it runs a microwave just fine. We still have about two minutes left and uh, 
I think at this point I'm going to try to kick on the uh, heater and see whether or not the, uh, uh, the generator goes into overload, which I suspect it will. Alright, let's kick that on. Here it goes. The microwave is still running and my small heater is still running. going to be able to handle that load very well. Although the heater is running and the microwave is still microwaving. I'm going to go ahead and let it run for the 45 seconds left. Let's see what happens when it kicks off. So we're down to about 8 seconds and uh, this generator is going to kick down a little bit. Here we go. And our heater is still running. Very interesting. So as we uh, pull this cup of water out of the microwave, yeah, that's nice and hot. So that generator works pretty good running the microwave, and I'm surprised it still ran and produced power when the heater kicked on. All right, so that's the test with the uh, wind generator. Now, side by side comparison, we're going to also run the Predator, we'll do the same test. Fire it up, we'll turn the power on, and then we'll uh, light the microwave up. About a minute left, we'll kick that heater on, and we'll see how well the Predator can pull that load. Actually, I was surprised that uh, with the microwave running and that 750 watt heater going, that it was still able to uh, produce power even though the uh, over light, overload light was flashing. So, hey, I'm impressed. Let's try the Predator. Just block the So I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn the power on to the microwave and the refrigerator. And you should hear that generator just kind of boost up a little bit and then kind of level back out. Then we'll uh, put our cup of water in the microwave, heat that up, and try it with the heater on. This hopefully uh, performs just as well as the wind. Mm -hmm. So I turned the power on in here, but I suspect that the uh, compressor for the uh, refrigerator already it shut off so that's why we didn't hear the, the boost in the generator so now we've got a cup of water ready let's go ahead and put it in the microwave and see if that uh, generator can keep up with the wind okay so just like the wind generator we've got a cup of water we're going to go ahead and put it in the microwave we're going to set that for four minutes and uh, here goes. So just like the wind generator, the Predator, once the microwave was started, also boosted up in its uh, RPMs, so it's producing the power to run the microwave. Runs it just fine. Nice and smooth and very quiet we've been running about a minute and a half right now and uh, once this gets down to about one minute then I'm gonna go ahead and plug the heater in which is down here and uh, 
we'll give that generator a listen. So I'm going to put the camera in front of the generator so when I plug it in, uh, you'll be able to see what the generator is doing. Can't get down that low. All right, so I'm going to turn the heater on. Microwave still has about, whoops, oh yeah, now it's cutting out. I don't think that Predator is going to hold up. There's that red light. Okay, something I noticed with the Predator that I didn't notice was with the wind was there was a little power surge, it cut out, the lights dimmed on the microwave, heater's still running, it's producing heat. It could be that the refrigerator also kicked on. The generator is now giving us a uh, red light. So we have about five seconds left. We should hear that generator kick down. There we go. And do we have hot water? Yeah, we got really hot water. So, let's put that right here. Let it steam up a little bit. Alright. Well, let's have our conclusions. So what I would say in conclusion is both of these generators handle just fine in a short, uh, small boondocking situation. So they'll handle a small heater, they'll handle, handle a small air conditioner, and they'll handle a refrigerator, microwave, and in a pinch, and I wouldn't recommend running it full time, uh, microwave and the small heater at the same time. The, uh, the overload lights did flicker, uh, but we still had power going into the system and things were still operating uh, basically normal. So I think we were at the peak at their limit. If one more thing kicked on, if the compressor on the refrigerator kicked on, I think, I think these things would have shut down and no longer produced power to run the units. But uh, for the money, these two generators are pretty good. The Wynn and the Predator, uh, basically they are very much identical other than the casing. And uh, I think one of the other things to consider is these two can be paralleled together. So uh, a 2,000 watt with a 2,000 watt, 4,000 watt combined producing about 3,200 power um, watts runtime. Consider about $450 for each. You're still at $900, which is about $100 less than if you bought one 2,000 watt Honda generator. Uh, so I think for the money, uh, it's a good investment. So far, they're performing well. We've had them under, uh, obviously, you've seen extreme loads and very light loads. So uh, very happy with the purchase. Appreciate Jack loaning me his generator, uh, taking a chance, maybe uh, popping it. <laughs> I'd have bought him another one. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the test and answered some questions. So, uh, what's the next one? Oh, yeah. The next question I guess we'd have to answer is, will these run sensitive electronics? Cell phones, televisions, and computers. So, I'm going to take a risk, pull out some of my hardware, and hook these things up and see if uh, these generators will actually run uh, or or sensitive equipment with no problem, which I'm confident they will. So until then, stay tuned.